Today we're gathered to explore the word of the Apostle Paul as he reflects on his ministry, life, and ministry. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7, Paul declared, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. These powerful words offer a blueprint for how we can remain steadfast in our faith. Even when facing life's most difficult challenges, let's break this down today. I woke up this morning and I went and I immediately called Reverend Bell. I called Reverend Bell because I was challenged and I needed to figure something out. And as I began to wrestle with what I was trying to figure it out, Mama Lynn, I went and I was in panic. Then I called Brother Joe and I thought maybe Pam could help. And Pam was not available today, so I really wrestled with that. And then, Gary, I went to do my morning devotion, and when I went to do my morning devotion, I realized I was one week ahead. And I said to myself right then, I said, Lord, I got too much on my plate. I said, man, I'm running myself. I don't want to know when I'm going or coming. And I said to myself, Eddie, I said, man, you got to change that. I look like I got it all together, but can I tell you deep down, I'm in a good fight for a fight for my life. And so I began to come to church early, and I said to God, God, I need a fresh word. And, and it reminded me in 2 Timothy chapter 4, where Paul says, for I have fought a good fight. I don't know about you, but whether you like it or not, you're in a fight. Is there anybody here that would testify that you're in a fight? And, and, and in this fight, I got to fight it a good fight. Is there anybody that would testify that I got to fight a good fight? And so in this fight, I understood that the only way I can fight this fight is with the word of God. Because I don't care how well you got it, there's a fight on the inside. And just when you think it, you got it all together, that's when you realize that you really need God. So I said to God on my way to church this morning, I said, God, if I ever needed you, I need you now. Is that anybody that can testify that if you ever needed God, you need him? Now, it looked like you got it all together, but underneath, you're saying, God, where are you? Is that anybody today? And Paul reminds me to say, for I have fought a good fight. Now, now a good fight is not one that you, and yeah, you want to cuss somebody out. Yeah, you want to put on the boxing glove. Yeah, you want to throw in the towel. But a good fight is to be able to know that the word says no weapon from the gate. Is there anybody that I can really be real with that will say that you're in a fight and you need to put the word of God on it to say no weapon from the gate you shall prosper. It doesn't matter what comes up against you. You're in a fight to be able to say in the name of Jesus because the word says Says you can have faith and if you have faith to believe it God can make a way out of no way you can say God I got money but money can't fix it God I got a roof but I don't have peace is there anybody in the house that would testify that you got faith to believe that God can make a way out of no way so Paul begins to write and say and then, now let me tell you something I'm not in a fleshly battle I'm in a spiritual battle the reason I'm in a spiritual battle is because I know the devil don't like me. When God gave birth to me in 1968, the devil tried to kill me, but God said I got a plan for him. Is there anybody in the house that can testify that I'm in a good fight? And that's why when I was in high school, Mama Lynn, I quit in 11th grade, but went right back to school because the devil did not like me. The devil has done everything he can do to try to distract me, Brother John, but I came to serve notice to devil that when I was born, I was born in a fight, and because I'm in a fight, I got to fight the good fight. 
and because I gotta fight the good fight, I know if, if I'm on God's side, and because I'm on the Lord's side, is there anybody in the house that would testify I'm on the Lord's side? And just because you got an assignment from God, doesn't mean that the enemy is gonna try to distract you. Let me work my way up there if you don't mind, because I'm in a fight. Tell your neighbor, I'm in a fight, and because I'm in a fight, I gotta know what the word says, and because I'm in a fight, I gotta know what the word says. The word says that man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Because I'm in a fight, I gotta know that when I'm down, that I can testify that no weapon formed against me, because I got the whole armor of God on, and because I got the armor of God on, I gotta be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I came to tell somebody today, you maybe ain't done anything wrong. The devil just don't like you, and because the devil don't like you, he put some enemy on your trail, but you gotta be able to stand flat-footed and tell the devil that our weapons are not carnal, they are, our weapons are spiritual, by pulling down the stronghold, is there anybody in the house that can testify that I'm in a good fight, and because I'm in a good fight, Tony, that means because that you try to do good, and you apply for this college, you try to get this, and obstacles come up against you, and the reason they come up against you is because God has placed something down on the inside to be able to say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world I just came to encourage Calvary today to tell you it's alright stay in the fight you gotta understand that in the battle of God you gotta stay in the fight I told Terry in Sunday school I said Terry the reason the enemy is after you is because you made a choice to serve God how many of you know when you make a choice to serve God the enemy would do everything he can do to try to distract you when I said yes to God you know what I made the devil mad is there anybody in the house that can testify is there, is there anybody here that can testify that the devil is mad at you anywhere also let me tell you something attacks will come on your life to see what's down on the inside of you and every time the devil comes up against me I tell the devil what Jesus said Jesus said it is written devil then I come to tell him that I got angels in cups all around me that's why the enemy try to attack you because you got an assignment for God is there anybody on an assignment for God Get it for God and because you're on an assignment for God and so the God showed me this morning in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and I preached it before but I feel it even greater now he says for I have fought a good fight and brother Billy that's why the enemy tried to attack your body it's because we're fighting a good fight. Minister George, you made a declare to God that you will serve to God all your life. And the minute that you start serving God, he began to attack your body. But you chose to tell him today, if I got to go in the, in the scooter, I'm going down to worship God because I got to fight the good fight. And that's why I came to tell somebody, even if you can't do nothing, you ought to shout hallelujah because God is good. Let me tell you, I don't get to choose what Sunday I come to church I gotta come to church every Sunday because this is the day the Lord has made I gotta rejoice and be glad and so the Apostle Paul reminds me today that in this life you gotta fight the good fight and not only do you fight the good fight he also says that you gotta finish your race is there anybody on a race for Jesus the Bible says the race is not given to the swift nor the strong but to the one that endured to the end I came to serve notice to you today that there is a miracle in the room you just gotta receive the miracle I came to tell somebody today no matter what the challenge is you gotta speak over your life I dare you to say you're blessed I dare you to say that God has favor on your life you gotta be able to walk in it I know it's not by what you see I talk about faith all the time and that's why you gotta rise up in your faith and I tell you I don't have any pity parties and when I ask God to heal me it maybe didn't heal me the way I wanted him to heal me but I had to walk on by faith and say he was wounded for my transgression he was bruised for my iniquities and by his stripes I am healed is there anybody that can tell the Lord yes I'm healed in spite of you're not looking at what the enemy is doing you're saying that God God is good. The Bible declares that the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but to the one that endured to the end. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm going to run my race. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm going to run my race. Can I tell you, consider David. He was in a fight for his life. He had to fight a, a giant.
giant. And, but uh, can I tell you, he got the victory over the giant. It wasn't the five stones. It was the word of God. Somebody ought to put the word on that. Is there anybody that can put the word on your situation? Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I want to have the fight. I want to have the, can I tell you what's going to help you win the fight? I'm almost done. The Bible says, for I have fought a good fight. I have finished my race. Can I tell you, is there anybody trying to do good and evil is always present? Is there anybody that's trying? Can I talk to some real folks? Can I slow down and talk to some real folks for just a moment? That doesn't seem like you take one step forward and you knock five steps backwards. Come on, talk to me today. Is there anybody that can testify that you're serving God, but even on the serving God that you have challenged? Because sometimes people don't believe that you have to go through. But let me tell you something. I'm reminded of what Paul says. Paul says, and uh, I asked him to remove the stone three times, but he told me his grace is sufficient. You know, grace will keep you. Is anybody that would testify that grace will keep you? Anybody that can truly listen, consider David who fought the giant Goliath was just a young shepherd. David was just a young shepherd but he fought a good fight because you know why he fought a good fight? Because in spite of, despite the odds, David knew what second but first Samuel says the battle was not his, it belongs to the Lord. Can you talk to me? Tell yourself that the battle is not yours. Come on, tell yourself the battle is the Lord. His victory over giants was not just a physical triumph, but a testament to the power of faith in God. Can I ask you, how much faith do you have in God? How much faith do you have in God? I want to ask you this. Listen, I want to tell you how you can test your faith. You can test your faith by what you're saying. You know, I, I, I'll tell you something. I have run into more Christians who say they have faith, but every time you hear or see them, they're always complaining. You know what God told me? I, I, I wrote this message this morning. Because I, I told you, I woke up. Listen, a week ahead. And I wrote this message this morning. And God said to me, majority of your problem, your, my problem is, is that you listen to too many negative people. Yeah. He said, he said you ask people how they're doing, they are so quick and negative. Everything about them is going south. And he said, because you are a sounding board, you are allowing yourself to listen. So I, I came to tell somebody today that you got to get rid of listen to negative people. Listen, listen. I, 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 I want to say this in a good way. I want to say this. In this place is all kinds of spirits. You got good spirits and you got bad spirits. And you got spirits who are pulling at me because I'm giving you a word. And, and when you are, know that you are battling some spiritual battles, you have to understand that you've got to continue to fight the good fight. That's why we try to shift the atmosphere so when you come in, even if you're negative, that we can get you into some positive energy. Come on, preach, forever. I, I, I need to slow down to help somebody. Listen, listen. You are a spirit living in a body. And, and the Bible says it this. He said, therefore, if any man be in what? Christ, he's a new creature. Listen, if all your days are bad, what God are you serving? If, if, if everything that you see is negative, do you really have faith to believe God? Listen, I, I'm not mad. I want to slow down. Because I'm going to fight a good fight. Somebody shout good fight. Good fight. You know, listen, listen. I don't, I don't, drink, I don't drink raw eggs. I don't drink raw eggs. It's nasty. But now when I beat it and put it into the skillet, I got some scrambled eggs. Yeah. Don't you just want to beat some people sometimes? Come on, talk to me. Listen, listen. This is a fresh message. Listen, you're in a good fight. Somebody shout a good fight. Somebody shout a good fight. Listen, this is a good fight. The Bible says this, and I preach this. And I'm going to help somebody. The Bible says, for there's life and death is in what? Power of the tongue. Somebody say, power of the tongue. Listen, every one of us has been through. Every one of us has been done wrong. Every one of us has done somebody else wrong. But we focus on what people do to us instead of what we've done to people. Come on, preach the word. I'm in a good fight. Somebody shout a good fight. See, when you're in a good fight and you want to win the fight, you got to identify that you're in a fight. And you got to know who you're fighting. Listen, you're not fighting against each other. You're fighting against the devil. Listen, we're on a winning team. Say we're on a winning team. Someone shout, I'm on a winning team. 
Listen, if one is down, the Bible said we're all down. Listen, good fight. Somebody shout good fight. Listen, like David, we too must trust in God's strength and not in our own. And the reason that many of us are losing the fight is because we're fighting in our own strength. But when we put it in God's hand, guess what? God does it for us. Listen, in our lives, we are called to fight the good fight of faith by standing firm on our belief. Can I ask you a question? What do you really believe? Really? What do you really believe? I know today is Sunday. You make it look good. But what about Monday? Is Monday really the Monday blues? Is Tuesday really so terrible you don't want to get up? Is Wednesday all your woes? Is Thursday just that terrible? To what every time Friday come, you rush because it's Friday? And then you sleep on Saturday? And you come to church on Sunday? And you show me your new watch? Is life really that bad? You know, God didn't create you to complain. The Bible declares when praises go up, blessings come down. And you want to know who not, you know how you know the praises are? Because they got blessings all around them. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Do you really believe you're blessed? Listen, listen. Even when we're surrounded by adversity, we fight through prayer. How is your prayer life? How is your prayer life? Ask yourself that. You know, I'm going to slow down because he didn't wake me up this morning to write this message for this just for me. Listen, how is your prayer life? Do you feel the only way you get a prayer is because you call pastor? No. You can call God sometime. You ought to be able to call God all the time. You know, there's sometimes that I just got to wake up in the midnight hour and pray. When I'm in my truck, I'm praying. And I know what prayer can do. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, uh, have faith in who? God. You don't have faith in me. I'm liable to mess up the minute I walk out the pulpit. But if I got faith in God, somebody shout God. Somebody shout God. You got to have faith in God. That's what it says. We fight through prayer. Not only through prayer, but you know what? Listen, every one of us got a smartphone. You ought to be able to praise God and fight through adversity through your praise and worship. You don't have to just come to church for praise and worship. You know, I, I look, I, and, and, and Carrie, I don't mean to uh, pick on your, on your little daughter. But you know what? Uh, she don't just come to church to dance. I saw her dancing in the, how, in the owl. I was watching her dance. So you know what that tells me? That tells me that she's dancing at home. You know? You can tell people who are praisers. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, praise the Lord. And, and let me say this too. Listen, you don't have to stand up to praise God. Sometimes people can be praising God sitting down. Because sometimes people would judge people. You know, sometimes people just can't get stand up. Sometimes they just wave their hand. Sometimes you find people just rocking. They, I, they, I got a problem with it. people that ain't doing nothing. Huh? Come on, somebody. You got to know how to praise God. Listen, you, and, and listen, live out God's word and learn to rely. If you want to fight the good fight, you got to learn to rely on the Holy Spirit. Jesus says that I will always be with you. Always. You're never alone. Listen, he, the Holy Spirit will guide us. We cha when challenges arise, can I say this again? Not if they arise, but when they arise. Listen, you're going to have a challenge. If, if somebody told you just because you're saved that you're not in the battle. You know, I heard this and you may have heard it. Somebody say, I don't know why good things happen to bad people. And why bad things happen to good people. You know, the Bible says it rains on the just as well as the unjust. And so you know what you have to do? You got to continue to fight the good fight. Somebody shout, fight the good fight. And now listen, have any of y'all ever been in a, in a real fight? You know, I, 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 really, I tell this in my, uh, I, think it's about, I think it's my seventh grade year. My brother Dinky was in ninth grade. And, you know, sometimes you would let your mouth overload your butt. Y'all ain't never done that, have you? You know, I did that. In uh, seventh grade, I let my mouth overload my butt. I was going to fight somebody, and, uh, and I get ready to fight him. And when I got ready to fight him, guess what? My big brother showed up. I was happy that he showed up. I was very happy. 
Then some of y'all may I, I tell you this. When I was in uh, sixth grade, uh, going into seventh grade, you used to have this kid. He used to try and beat me up all the time. He tried to beat me up, put me in a locker. This day, he was not going to put me in a locker. I wasn't going to let nobody put me in a locker. Not, no, not today. So we had them big old iron forks and big old iron combs. And so this day, this guy was going to try to put me in a locker. He wasn't going to put me in a locker. Somebody shot, fight the good fight. So I had this iron pick. He went to put me in a locker that day. I took that comb out of my hair. And guess what I did? He went to put his hands on me. And I put that comb in his hand. Guess what? Nobody picked on me for the rest of my years. Now that was a bad fight. Then. Am I right about it, Lord? I, I would tell you the guy's name. But his mother goes to Angus Edgar Baptist Church now. And she remembered me when I preached over there. She said, you're the young father that put those stitches in my son's hand. I said, boy, thank God for grace. You see, listen, somebody say, fight the good fight. Fight the good fight. Listen, in fighting a good fight, you have to design yourself to continue to fight and finish your race. Because the enemy will try to stop you. Has anybody been the enemy trying to stop you from the plans that God has for you? You, you know God has gave you plans, but the enemy tried to stop you. Paul second declares that he has finished the race. The Christian life is often compared to a race. Not a sprint. But a marathon, it requires endurance. Somebody shout endurance. And this is something I want to tell you. This is when I tell God I'll slow down on. Because all of us don't like this. Patience. Patience. Tony would tell you, she'd be working the services at, uh, at Home Depot. People come in and, and they, she, they know that they got a line right there. They're like, can you hurry up, Tony? I mean, they just, am I, am I, they, nobody has patience anymore. Somebody shout patience. And, and you know, out, out of all of us, as Christians, we ought to have patience. How many can testify you need patience? Come on, amen. Only three of y'all need patience. Amen. But we really do. We're in a rush. We're in a rush. Not only patience, but we got to stay focused. Listen, if you're not focused, the enemy will take you off your course. Do you know how many times that if I know that if I wasn't called, that I would have gave a resignation and quit? But I, I got to stay focused because God has called me. I got to stay focused. You know, even I have to stay so focused. You know, I get people in Tulsa, they'll say this, oh man, if you were in Tulsa, we'd come to, we'd come to your church. If you was in Tulsa, you'd do it. I say, I'm only 17 miles away. You ain't going to take me off focus. If God really wanted you to be at my church, you'd be there. See that? Somebody shall stay focused. See, you got to stay focused. Because if you're not focused, the enemy will make it look good and get you off your course. But the Bible says, for I have finished my race. So not only that, the race means stand true to the course that God has set before us, regardless of the obstacles. Now, I want to say this here. As you're sitting here, you got obstacles. You got obstacles. Even from the youngest to the oldest, you got obstacles. And the enemy wants you to quit your race. But you got to finish your race. You got to finish the race that God set before you. Listen, it's not about the strength that I have. It's about you calling the strength that you have on yourself. Because this is what the word says. The word says, greater is he that is in what? You than he's in the world. So you got to put the strength within you. you got to reach down in yourself and be able to say, you know what, God? This battle that I'm in is not my battle. The battle is yours. And you can win that battle. Consider the story of Moses. God called Moses to, the, to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and into the promised land. It was a long journey. Any of y'all feel like the journey's been long? It was a long journey filled with moments of doubt. Anybody ever just had some doubt? Rebellious? Some of y'all some, some of y'all are just so rebellious. I had to look in the mirror myself. Because all of us got some stubbornness in us. All of us. All right. Yeah, I knew I wouldn't get no amen in that. Thank you for being honest, Karen, because yes, you do. I'm sorry. And hardship. <laughs> Somebody shout hardship. Any of you ever had any hardship in your life? Yet Moses remained faithful to God's will. He led the people to the brink of the promised land, having faith for the mission God had given him. Though Moses did not physically enter the promised land, he completed his race by faithfully carrying on God's instructions. You know, God gives us instructions. And we say this word. We say, in all our ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. But as he gives us to direct our path, sometimes we get off the path. Is there anybody here today that would testify you've been off the path? Well, I'll tell you, I've been off the path. But I thank God that I get back on the path. I 
thank God that there's been times in my life that I've not always made the right choices. But I thank God for breath that gave me grace today to be able to say, God, I thank you for another day. Is that anybody's testimony today? Now, they're going to take, as I get ready to close, this is, I'm going to give you one close today because I feel led to help you today. That, that word breaks it down into three levels. For I fought a good fight. I finished the race. But now, how are you going to finish the race? Can I help you? These last few preaching moments. You're going to finish the race because he said, I've kept the faith. I've kept the faith. Look at it. Finally, Paul declares, I've kept the faith. Keeping the faith meaning holding on to the truth of the gospel. Do you really believe that God says to us, great is he that is in me than he is in the world? Do you really believe that there's power in your tongue and what you're saying? If you really believe that, then you'll be careful for what you say. Listen, there's curses and there's blessings in your tongue, in your word. Listen, you don't, let me tell you something. You know how to say what needs to be said here. The question is when you're outside the church, what are you speaking over your life? Are you speaking you're having bad days? Are you speaking that there's death, that there's life, that there's death in your body? Are you really claiming that there's victory in it? You know, I, and, and, and I'm only saying this as a testimony. Listen, uh, I am healed. I am totally healed. Even though the enemy tried to attack sometime, I still had speaking to declare my body. People say, how are you doing? I'm fine. I am totally fine. Why? Because I know what the word says. The word reminds us that we're fine. Somebody shout, I'm fine. Somebody shout, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Listen, you have to speak that. You know what? The Bible comes to remind us to consider and tell us that we have to have faith. It means not allowing the trials of life to cause us to lose hope. You listen to what the word says. Listen, the Bible tells us that either we're going to operate in two levels. We're going to operate in fear or we're going to operate in faith. And, and, and let me tell you something. I like, I love, I love, love Mr. Goff. I love that man. The man has wisdom. You know, I, I, I've been listening to him for two weeks. I, I hear it, Brother Golf. Brother Golf says, you know, man, sometimes you just need rest. He says, sometimes you just need to throw some of that stuff off your plate. Sometimes you just need to enjoy life. So, you know, Jesus worked six days, and seventh day he rested. I want to say to somebody, sometimes you just got to take rest. Let me never say rest. You know, when you say you're going to take rest in a sabbatical, it doesn't mean that you got to work. Sabbatical and rest means that you just take everything off your plate, throw it away. Look at your name and say rest. Who am I talking to today? I'm not talking just to me, but I really am talking to somebody just need to rest. You know, you can have all the money in the world. What are you going to do with it if you can't enjoy it? Come on, look at that. Man, I, 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 told, I told Christy, I told her last week, I said, I'm selling everything. I can't take none of that stuff with me. I need to enjoy somebody's out life. You got to enjoy life. You know, I, I see people. I serve people. I'm in hospice. I serve people. I serve some of the wealthiest. I serve some of the poorest. I see some of the most wealthiest people don't even know what they got. Why? You got to rest. Somebody's got to enjoy life. 